So meaning to say, you can use it. It depends on how much oxygen you are giving to the patients. Okay, and you should know how to calculate it. Like for example, your patient is receiving eight liters or five liters of oxygen, and the it's full. So meaning to say, it's five hundred sixty. Okay. Now if you are traveling, like for example, you are um, doing an ambulance conduction, you are sending the patient home. You have to calculate how many tank you need. Maybe they will travel by Maka or they will travel by um, Yangu or Taip, you need this bottle, okay, this oxygen. So here we have a knob, okay. This one, if you will turn it counterclockwise, it will open. If you will turn it clockwise, it will be closed, okay. So before you can use this, before you can dial the knob, you have to first switch on the main knob. Okay, because no oxygen will come out unless you will keep this one open. So I'm gonna turn it open. Then this is the dialing knob now. So you can see this one can deliver up to 25 liters of oxygen. More than the one in the wall. In the wall you can give up to how many liters? 15 liters almost. Okay. So here, simple to use, just open it. Like for example, 3 liters, 4 liters, and you can just connect the tube and administer it to your patient. Okay? Do you have any questions for this? Again, the, the full amount of this is 560. Okay, 560 liters. So, you can use it for a long time. Now, if you are in the unit, the first thing that you have to do, if you need to use the oxygen tank, of course, to check if how much remaining. For example, this one is in the red line. It's in the red line. Are you going to use it? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, what are you going to do? Yes, send it to the lineman and get a new one for replacement for it. Alright, so we have this in the wall. Also, we can get the oxygen through the wall. Okay, in all patients' room, we have this. Um, how much oxygen do you think we are breathing right now? 16, 21, what about the others? Actually, it's 20 to 21 percent. Okay, so 21 percent. What about the rest? Nitrogen. Okay, we are breathing in 78 percent of nitrogen, and one percent of that are other gases or vapor. All right, what do you think is the reason why we have 78 percent of nitrogen? Why 21% of oxygen only? Both of them are essential. Nitrogen is essential. Oxygen is essential. But what do you think is the reason we need more nitrogen rather than the oxygen? What is the purpose of this nitrogen? Sorry, Kulun? Maybe we need it to tend to the water. Alright, the main reason is because this nitrogen he is the responsible in opening the alveoli of the lungs. You know, it's like he's the security guard. If the students will come in, he will open the door. If the students will come out, he will close the door again. He will open and close it. Okay? You know, this alveoli is responsible in opening this nitrogen is responsible in opening the alveoli. So meaning to say, if we don't have nitrogen, what will happen? Oxygen will go inside the lungs. Carbon dioxide will stay in the lungs as well. They will not come out. Oxygen will not come in. So, your lungs will collapse. What will happen? Atelectasis. So, atelectasis will happen. Okay? Now, let's define what is oxygen. What is the definition for oxygen? Oxygen is considered as a medication or a drug. So meaning to say, it needs a doctor's order, okay? But is there any exception? Considered as a drug and a therapeutic medical gas, 
Now the question is, actually this question was raised by the Sibahi during their visit. Is oxygen flammable? Yes. How we will answer it? Yes. Yes? What about the others? Yes? 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 What about Mambo Shell? <laughs> no. No. See? Do you have a lighter with you? Yes. Who are you or a smoker? Raise your hand. <laughs> now you don't like to tell me you're not smoking. <laughs> I'm not a smoker, but if you will grab a lighter and you will open it, if oxygen is flammable, we will all gonna die, right? So meaning to say, oxygen is not flammable, right? Oxygen surrounds us. Now if this one is flammable, then we are all dead here, right? So why is the fire not basic, 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 basic element for fire? What is this? Yes, this is what I want to tell you now, the following, because oxygen will just support combustion. That's why if there is fire, we are turning off the oxygen so that the fire will not spread. The fire will not become big because it will support combustion. Like for example, you, have, you are having party in your house, right? You're doing the barbecue party or something like this. You put the charcoal, you put the fire. What are you doing to increase the fire? You're funny. When using this, or sometimes an electric fan, right? Mm -hmm. This is just to support the combustion, so making the fire bigger, okay? But it's not flammable, so take care of that. Hypoxemia or hypoxia. What do you mean by hypoxemia or hypoxia? Hypoxemia is oxygen. Low oxygen on the blood or in the circulation, okay? So these are the symptoms that we have for hypoxia. Early symptoms usually it will have the restlessness of the patient. The patient will become anxiety and you will get tachycardia and tachypnea for them. Okay? Anxiety, tachycardia, and tachypnea. Okay? But later on, late symptoms will become patient instead of tachycardic, they will be number tachycardic. Okay? Extreme restlessness, it will increase. And then patient will develop also this neck or sometimes sharpness of breathing. Okay? Don't forget the mnemonics here. Early rat is late to bed. Okay? Rat stands for restlessness, anxiety, tachycardia, and tachypnea. And late symptoms will be bed, bradycardia, extreme restlessness, and dyspnea. For pediatrics, we have F-I-N-E-S or fines, okay? Feeding difficulty, inspiratory stridor, we have the nares flaring, expiratory grunting and external retractions, all right? These are the signs and symptoms of hypoxia. Now, what are the indications of oxygen treatment? Why are we giving an oxygen support to a patient? Number one is to prevent or correct hypoxemia, all right? Number two, we are giving oxygen in clinical situation where oxygen transport to the tissues may be impaired. Like what? Like what diseases? The most common is shock. There's no evident um, enough perfusion in the body. So we are giving oxygen to support them. Okay, what else? Acute coronary insufficiency, All right? What else? CBA. Those patients who has CVA, they need an oxygen support, okay? And what are the, the complications? Complications, hypoventilation with CO2 retention is possible respiratory arrest in patients with COPD. That's why we have to take care if the patient um, was diagnosed with COPD, we're not going to give high flow oxygen. We are giving on low flow oxygen. Sometimes one liter only or even 0.5. You know some physicians they will order 0.5 liters just to support their breathing but not to give them a lot because this one will not help them. This one might kill them if you will give a high flow oxygen support. Um, absorption atelectasis. Have you heard about absorption atelectasis? Atelectasis is lung collapse. Huh? If you give a lot of oxygen and nitrogens are not working in the lungs, what will happen? Atelectasis. 
lungs will collapse and then patient will arrest respiratory arrest okay what about retrolental fibroplasias have any one of you heard this if you have an experience in picu niku you will hear this one retrolental fibroplasias um no so we have also oxygen toxicity okay this is now the retrolental fibroplasias okay why this one is happening um this is very common with you know the babies if they were born immature or their lungs is premature now we don't have any choice but to support them with oxygen right so we're going to give them an oxygen for a couple of days or sometimes even weeks now the problem is if this baby will be on long-term support for oxygen their eyes will become like this okay but we don't have any choice what do you want for the babies to have like this and to be alive or we're not going to give an oxygen and the patient will die or the baby will die of course we will give an oxygen just to survive and support these lungs okay but as a result they might have this retrolental fibrotations oxygen toxicity okay um, also for adult patients, they might have some adult oxygen toxicity. And what are the, the signs and symptoms of oxygen toxicity? How you will know if your patient is already having a toxicity in oxygen? What will be the common signs and symptoms? Hyperventilation. Hyperventilation, um, no. What do you think? They might develop some cup, productive cup. You know what else? Sometimes they will feel dizzy. They will feel dizzy because too much oxygen is circulating in the body now. What else? What else? What else? You know the most common thing that is happening in the unit sometimes if you will put them on pulse oximeter with an oxygen support. Their oxygen saturation is more than 95%, 96, 97, 98, up to 100. But still, they are complaining of shortness of breathing. Meaning to say, oxygen went inside the lungs and it's trapped already, it will not go outside. It will remain there as carbon dioxide. We do have lots of patients like this. Even the saturation is 100%, 98%, but still, they are complaining of shortness of breathing. And if you will check the ABG, the result is abnormal. Meaning to say, carbon dioxide retention. The carbon dioxide is inside the body, it's not flowing out. Now, if you are working in the ICU CCU, 100% you know what is treatment for CO2 retention. What is the treatment? Our PAP, BiPAP, CPAP. So, we will put the patient on BiPAP or CPAP just to flush out the excess carbon dioxide. Okay, now take note of that one. Okay, if your patient is on oxygen support, still complaining of shortness of breathing, and you saw the saturation is 100%, 99 or 98%, meaning to say there's something wrong with the oxygen. Maybe you are giving too much oxygen. Try to remove it. Ask the doctor if he will order to remove it and check the saturation. If it not, if, if, if this one will not go down, meaning to say maybe there's a lot of carbon dioxide. Okay. So as per policy, respiratory therapies will provide therapy according to physician order, ICU, CCU, and PQ only. Oxygen therapy should not be carried out without written order. You cannot initiate an oxygen therapy unless there's a written doctor's order. Okay? But is there any exception? Yes, in case of emergency situation. Okay? Emergency situation meaning to say very evident that your patient is having shortness of breathing. You check the saturation, it's 85, 86. Now the doctor is far away. Maybe in other unit. Do you think we can wait for the doctor just to write the, the doctor's order and we can initiate the oxygen? No. Initiate the oxygen first and then orders will follow. Okay? So in emergency cases. Now what are the modalities in giving the oxygen support? We have two modalities. Number one is the low flow system and number two is the high flow system now what are the difference of these two low flow system we do have the nasal cannula we have simple face mask we have partial rebreathing mask we have the non-rebreathing mask all right 
where in, in high flow we got the venturi, we have oxyrub, we have the phase and oxygen tank. Now, from these devices, we can now determine why we have the low flow and why we have the high flow. What do you think are the difference of this? When you say low flow, when you say low flow, it doesn't mean that we are giving one liter or two liters only, three liters. It's not about how many liters you're giving. It's about how many fraction of inspired oxygen is going inside the body or to the patient, okay? For nasal cannula, when your patient has a nasal cannula, can we measure, can we measure how much oxygen is going inside the body? When your patient is on face mask, can we measure how much oxygen is going inside the body? Yes or no? I want an answer. Yes or no? Can we measure it? Can we measure it? Anto? Yes, how? How we, how we can measure it? How, how, how much FIO2 is going inside the patient? We cannot, right? The reason is, if you are using a nasal cannula or simple face mask, we are just estimating. It's not the exact oxygen or FIO2 that we are giving. Okay, like for example, nasal cannula, your patient is a nasal cannula. Do you think all the, the oxygen is going inside? No. Sometimes the patient will resist. Sometimes they don't want to comply. They are removing one probe or sometimes they are removing it by their own. As well as for the face mask, sometimes the patient will not cooperate. They will remove the, their face mask. And this face mask, there is a hole. There is a hole, right? So meaning to say, all the oxygen will not be going inside. Some of it will go outside. So meaning to say, for a clear definition, low flow is just estimation. Estimation. Okay, estimation of the FI2 that is going inside the patient. Wherein, if you will gonna use Venturi or Oxygen 100%, you know this oxygen is going inside the patient. We can include the ETT on the high flow, high flow system because once you put the ETT to the patient and you connected this into the ventilator, you know exactly on the settings how much oxygen is going inside the patients. Okay, that's the difference of these two. Now we'll discuss it one by one for the nasal cannula. This is how to properly secure it, okay? Not the one like, for example, you will put it in the nose and you will crack it here. This is the proper way of putting the oxygen on the nasal cannula, all right? But take care for long-term patients, sometimes they might develop ear sore, okay? Now what are the interventions on how to prevent this? Put something on this one, okay? Sometimes we are using some blue derms, so that it will not, so this plastic thing will not touch the skin of the patient. Okay. Now, what are the, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this nasal cannula? First advantage, easy to use. Even the patient, if they will go home, you can instruct them how to use it. Right. What else? These are disposables. After using it, after the patient used it. It, okay. Now, what are the disadvantages of this? Number one, it can cause ear sore. Number two, it can strangulate the patient as well. If the patient is not cooperative or out of his mind or her mind, sometimes it can strangulate them. What else? It can cause nasal mucosa injury because of the props. If you will put it inverted, it can really injure your nasal mucosa. What else? You need to use it for a long period of time because this is not the best um, oxygen support. Um, for the nasal cannula, guys, how much you can give? One liter, two liters, four liters, six liters? One to five? Up to six? What about the others? Nasal cannula, you can give it from one liter up to five liters only. Okay, one liter to five liters only, depending on the doctor's order. Right? 
So if they will ask for nasal cannula 6 liters, we have the right to sometimes remind the doctors. Okay, doctor, nasal cannula is up to 5 liters only. If you want to use, or if you want to give 6 liters, we have to use face mask. Alright? And this is the next one, simple face mask. Alright? So simple face mask, this is how to properly use it. We have this plastic thing and we have a metal clip on the nose part, okay? So you can pinch it so that it will be properly secured to the patient. How many liters per face mask? Six to 10, okay? Six to 10. And take care guys, this is our responsibility. Once you are giving um, a face mask, well, oxygen support to your patient, it should not go down six, beyond six, okay? It should always be on six liters. And again, as I'm telling you, if you have a patient who, who, who is using a face mask, two liters nasal uh, face mask, I mean, what will happen to the patient later on? What will happen? And this is, you know, this is, this is something useful that, that is happening in the unit. Patient is on two liters nasal nasal cannula, and then the relative will request, can we change it into face mask because they don't like the nasal cannula? And you will change it into face mask. Then after few hours, patient now was transferred to the ICU. What is the reason? CO2 retention. Face mask, if you will use it in six liters below, like five liters below, I mean, you will have a CO2 retention later on. Right, so it's a big no. Don't ever use a face mask from five liters below. It should be always six liters. All right. What are the advantages of this? It's also easy to use. You will just put it like that. Even in the home, they can use it. Okay. What else? It will not irritate the nasal mucosa because it's just here. What about the disadvantages? What are the disadvantages? Of this? CO2 retention, if you reduce it improperly, okay? What else? It muffles communication. Sometimes you will not hear what is the patient saying or telling you. What else? Sometimes patient, it will cause dryness in the mouth. And the main thing here is if they want to eat, they cannot eat because it's closed. So in that case, what are you going to do? If the patient wants to eat, are you going to remove it and let the patient eat for 30 minutes? No. Ask the doctor if you can shift it into nasal cannula. Okay? But again, as I, as I am telling you, nasal cannula is 1 to 5 only. Okay? So just ask the doctor, maybe we can put him or her in 5 liters nasal cannula. Then after eating, put back on face mask. Right? Partial rebreathing mask. Partial rebreathing mask, as you can see, we have a reservoir for the bug, and we have an open, open valve here. It's not closed, okay? What, um, so this is the partial rebreathing. The mechanism of this is like this. Oxygen will go here and it will go to the reservoir, okay? So, O2 will be directed into the reservoir. All oxygen will go to the reservoir. During inspiration, if the patient will breathe in, it will draw gas from the bug and from the room air. Why from the room air? Because this one is open. There's still hole. Alright? So patient will breathe in, he will get or she will get the oxygen from the bug and some from the here from the outside okay now during expiration the first one third of the gas will go into the dead space this is the dead space that we are talking about during expiration the air that was expired will go to the back and it will mix with the oxygen okay <clears throat> and dead space gas mixes with new oxygen going into the back all right so stay care on this this is partial rebreathing. How many liters for this? How many liters? Nasal cannula is 1 to 5. Face mask 6 to 10. 
This one is 8 to 15. 8 to 15. This is partial rebreathing mask. Next will be non rebreathing mask. When you say non rebreathing mask, they are almost the same. We have the reservoir. Okay? The only difference is this one is now closed. See? We have only one way valve. When you say valve, this is the one responsible for opening and closing. Okay? Like, like you know the valves in the heart, it will open and then it will close one day. It can never be at the same time it's open and closed. Okay? It's either open only or it's either closed only. So this is now the non rebreathing mask. We have two one-way valve. Okay? Now the mechanism of this, oxygen will go again to the reservoir here and then valve will prevent exhaled gas flow into the reservoir. Bar. Okay? Valve over exhalation ports prevents air entrainment and delivers O2 if valve does not completely collapse during inhalation. So meaning to say if the patient is breathing in, what she's getting or he's getting is purely from the bag, the oxygen. Now, upon expiration, what will happen? Ports will prevent air entrainment. So meaning to say it will not give you an oxygen from the outside. Purely you will breathe in from here only. Then after that, upon expiration, some of your um, expired gas will again circulate on this bag. Okay? And don't forget guys, if your patient is in both of this, like partial or non elevator, avoid squishing, squishing the bag. This is not right. Okay? I am seeing some that, you know, what they are doing, they, they are squeezing this. No, it will be harmful to the patient. Just let it be, you know, like that. Avoid squeezing. What about the Venturi? Have you heard about Venturi system? Or have you ever used it before? Yes. So Venturi, this is a high flow device, okay? And it's color coded. We, we, we call this one as color coded jet adapters, okay? By the way, guys, before I will forget, the non rebreathing mask, it can be from 10 liters up to 15 liters, okay? So again, nasal candula, uh, five, base mask, six to ten, partial rebreathing, and non rebreathing, ten to fifteen, okay? Now this one, this is what we call as colored, color coded jet adapters, okay? Now, for Venturi face mask, how many liters you will give to the patient? It depends on the doctor's order, okay? If you will see, this color coded has a different percentage of FIO2. Like for example, this yellow, 35%, alright? This white is 28%, this green is 60%. So, if the doctor will order this, they will write in the order sheet, give, then, uh, start Venturi face mask to the patient, 60%. Meaning to say, you're gonna use the green one, which is 60%. And if you will see, on the bottom of this, it will determine now how many liters per minute you will give. 60 liters, how many? 15, okay? If the doctor changed the order into 28%, how many you will give? Four liters. Four liters. That's it. You will base your liters per minute on the order and in the color. Okay? And we do have the tracheostomy color as well. Tracheostomy color. Those patients with tracheostomy, we have to use this. Okay? That's it. Now I want you to stand up. Six sides. Medical air, four. Suction, four also. Square. But the suction is bigger than this, okay? So meaning to say, you cannot interchange them. You cannot put oxygen on the air. You cannot put the air on the oxygen itself, okay? And this is for patient safety, okay? Even though blindly you, you close your two eyes or one eye, you can still put it on the proper place, all right? And we do have these accessories as well. You know what is this? 
Huh? Sir, Molly? What is this? In case of emergency, patient was intubated, there's nebulization ongoing, or you have to put something on this, and you will tell your colleague, can you give me the white one, the white one, the white one? <laughs> what is the white one? <laughs> the tube like white one. So it will take 30 minutes for them to look for it. Okay? So let's be organized. This one is called as corrugated, corrugated. tube. Corrugated. Why it's called corrugated? It's like the roof. You know, the corrugated roof. When you see it like this, it's like a roof. So corrugated tube. Okay? And we have the P tube as well. P tube, if you are giving an oxygen support and at the same time you are giving a nebulization. Or sometimes there's another one P tube if the patient is on ventilator and you need to do the suctioning as well at the same time. Okay, nebulization. Just put the solution here, close it, then connect the face mask or sometimes even the tube only. You can use this one. Okay, ETT tube. Don't forget. Right? Who will be working the ICCU? You? you? So most of the Three time of you are them. using this. Mm -hmm. Okay? So make sure that you are using the correct size and every time that this was inserted, inflate this. Okay? Don't forget to inflate this one or else everything will be a mess. Then, <clears throat> ambu bag. Okay? Ambu bag. You should know how to use this one. The narrow is in the nose. NN. N N narrow nose narrow nose okay and the wide is for the mandible or the chicken so you you did your BLS ENE technique okay the main thing that I just want to emphasize is whenever you are giving an ambu bag to your patient or you are doing an ambu bagging don't fully squeeze the bag because you are just hyperventilating just squeeze like this but don't you know forcefully don't do like that okay. Also during CPR, this is what we are noticing with them. They are very aggressive in giving ventilation to the, to the point that they will squeeze fully the bag. No. As per evidence base, like that is enough already. Okay, as long as you saw the chest rise, that's good to go. Alright? Now here, I'm going to teach you how to do a tracheostomy care. Okay? Tracheostomy care. First thing that you have to, to do is... Make sure that everything is complete in the room, okay? If you have a patient with tracheostomy and you receive your patient in the morning, what are the things that you have to check? Of course, there should be an ambu bag in the bedside. All patients with tracheostomy should have an ambu bag in the bedside. What is the reason? What is the reason for this? Why there should be an ambu bag? Huh? Suction secretions, aside from that one. Anytime the patient can have desaturation, so you have to give a positive pressure to the patient. Also, every time you will do suctioning, every time you will do tracheostomy care, you have to hyperventilate the patient. Okay? If the patient is not connected into the oxygen source, you can use the ambu bag. Alright? What else, aside from the ambu bag, what should be in the bedside always? Suction. Suction. We have what you, what you call this obturator. I don't know if I have it here. I think I have it here. This one. Obturator. Okay? What is the reason why we have to keep this one on the bedside? Black? Aside from black? The main reason is... The main reason is if the patient cut out and this one is, you know, pulled out a little bit, you can put this one, obturator, just to secure it and then call the physician, okay? So that we can push it back or they can do some suturing if needed, okay? This is most important thing. It's like a stylet, okay? So these are the things, ambu bag plus your obturator. If you don't have an obturator because some patient will come here, they don't have this device already, ICU, CCU, they are keeping, um, what do you call this one, stylet. They have a stylet with that, all right? Now, you're ready, you have your patient with tracheostomy. <clears throat> First thing that you have to do before the tracheostomy care, you have to do two things. Hyperventilate the patient and check for the lung sounds. Okay? Why do we need to check the lung sounds? To check later on if patient improve or the lung sounds improve. Okay? So grab your stethoscope, listen to the lung sounds. You will hear some rouse, you will hear some, you know, 
Krakos. Um, Krakos. You will hear that there's much secretions in the chest. So after that, hyperventilate. Now, how are, how are you going to hyperventilate the patient? Again, if the patient is connected on the oxygen source, you have to put it on full blast. And then after that, wait for one minute before you will do the care or the suctioning. Okay? After one minute, close the oxygen source or put it on the normal, you know, like two liters or three liters only. Then after that, you can start the tracheostomy care. Now, what, what did I tell you earlier? If you don't have an oxygen support, this patient is through air, you can use the bag. So just put the ammo bag, then how many breaths you will give? Two? Two ammo bags only? You can do the ammo bagging for at least 30 minutes, 30 seconds, sorry. 30 seconds, okay? So how many breaths? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Basic BLS, patient has pulse. So one breath every five to six seconds, right? So in 30 seconds, you can give around how many? How many? Yeah. Sorry? Six or five. Is that? Okay. So after that, after hyperventilating the patient, you should now have your things ready. Alright? What are the things you need for tracheostomy care? You might need suction catheter. Okay? If there's too much secretion, you can do suctioning first before the tracheostomy care. And how you will determine the size of the suction catheter? Can I use um, 14, 12, 10, 8? How you will how you will determine the size of the catheter or the suction catheter? Yes, exactly. It depends on the size of the tracheostomy. Now, in this case, I'm to the size is seven. So, can you tell me which catheter I need to use? Why? Why ten or twelve? What is the international formula for calculation of this? 7, the size of the tracheostomy times 2. So 7 times 2. 14, 14. minus 2. 12. Okay, so we will use the 12. Alright? So 12 is the most, um, or I mean the most appropriate capital size to be used. Then next, we should have sterile gloves. Okay? Tracheostomy care should be a sterile procedure, okay? Or else your patient will have infection. We have the disposal gloves. This one is for suctioning. It's one piece only, one piece, okay? So whenever you are doing the suction, wear this one once you are ready to put in the catheter. This one will hold the catheter itself, okay? And the unsterile one will hold, you know, this thing, all right? Then we have the tracheostomy kit. Okay, tracheostomy kit. When you open this, it will be complete. There's a brush, there's some um, sterile gloves, there's some tie for the tracheostomy, sterile gauze, um, alcohol, I mean cotton balls. Alright, and iodine. We need an iodine also, this one. Okay, iodine swabs just to clean around the side or the hole. Okay. Then we should use also hydrogen peroxide. Okay? Some set, they will give you already a hydrogen peroxide. But if you don't have, you have to get some hydrogen peroxide. And this one's a new goes. Okay? If you don't have the tie, you can use this one. Alright? Now, suctioning. First, suctioning, as I told you, you have to wear your unsterile gloves first. Third gloves, what will be the next thing that you have to do? Prepare your saline. Put it on specimen bottle. Prepare it. Then after that, check the suction if working or not. Okay? Now, how much pressure we need to use for the suction? Pressure. Are you checking the suction suction wall for the for the pressure? Or no, you're just using it as long as there is you can use it. 200. What about you? You you work in the ICU for how many years? 150 to 200. 150 to 200. Almost you made it. 
You know that the the right pressure for a patient with tracheostomy is 100 to 150 only. Yes, don't go above 150. The reason is when you do the suction, you are removing the secretions, you are removing the oxygen, and there's a tendency that you will irritate the airway. So don't use much pressure, right? And you know there's one patient before, patient went down from ICU to the unit. Then after an hour, the patient came back to the ICU. And the reason is aspiration. What causes the aspiration? The nurse did suctioning. And then when I check the pressure in the wall, it's 600. Okay? And when they check the patients in the ICU, they said that there's a bleeding on the airway. So this blood went through the lungs and it caused aspiration to the patients. So, you know, we are not helping the patient. We are getting them worse. So please follow, put the oxygen, I mean the suction wall in 100 to 150 pressure only, okay? Now if you are ready to, to suction the patient, you can now open your sterile gloves, okay? As I told you, it's one piece only. Then what you can do now, you can wear this sterile gloves. We're sterile now, right? You can pull out the catheter. Can you help me, please? And you can touch this part only because this is sterile. Now, for suctioning, how many seconds you need to do it? How many seconds? Seconds. Not more than fifteen seconds. Not more than fifteen seconds. Okay. For um, neonates, you have to do it within three to five seconds only. Don't go above five seconds, okay? And for suctioning, do not apply suction when you insert the catheter. Don't apply suction, okay? When are you going to apply suction? When pulling the catheter, okay? And pulling the catheter it should be circular motion to prevent any damage from the airway, okay? And suction should be intermittent, not continuous, okay? Or else, what will happen if you did continuous suction? Patient will, will become hypoxic because, as I told you earlier, we are not just removing the secretions, we are also removing the oxygen. Okay? So, do the suction, it should be less than 15 seconds. Do not apply suction when you put in the catheter. Apply suction when you, pull, you are pulling the catheter. Pull the catheter slowly in circular motion and do an intermittent suctioning. Okay? Then after that, rinse it with saline. Then after that, dispose this one. Okay? Dispose this. This is single use. Now, if still there is secretion, you can again use it, but at the same time only, same time of the suctioning. Okay? This is now my second time that I will suction the patient. After that, throw. After an hour or two, I need to do suctioning. I need to use another one. All right? Let's say this is my sterile gloves. Of course, you will not touch this unless you are sterile already. Okay? And okay, it's, stomach care. Yes. And it's better that there's someone be, beside you to help you for the things. Okay? Um, you can use this one as a cover here for the patient. Then the next thing that you have to do is get hydrogen peroxide. Let's say this is hydrogen peroxide, okay? And as long as you are not um, cleaning yet, you can still hold on the inner cannula, okay? So you can remove this inner cannula. How you will remove it? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise and then soak it with the hydrogen peroxide, all right? Now after that, you can now wear your sterile gloves. I hope it will fit it. Brush for cleaning the inner cannula. Um, usually, if the patient came in with a new tracheostomy, they have a spare. So you can use the spare and put it in and just clean the old one. But trust me, most of the patients coming, they don't have the spare anymore. 
Okay? They have only that device. We have some cotton applicator. Okay? Then some gauss and cotton swab. Now, you can ask someone to put a saline here and then um, also an uh, hydrogen peroxide if needed. Okay? But to tell you, we need two solutions. Number one, the first solution is the hydrogen peroxide and the normal saline mixed together. Okay? And the other one, it's pure normal saline only. Where are we going to use these things? The hydrogen peroxide with normal saline, we're going to use it for cleaning. And the normal saline will be for rinsing. Okay? Because we don't want the hydrogen peroxide to stay on the tube. We have to clean it and rinse it with normal saline. Alright, then after that, you got this inner cannula. Okay, it's soaked with hydrogen peroxide. Now you can use the brush and you can clean it with hydrogen peroxide plus the normal saline. Okay, you can put the brush like this and on the other way as well. Like that. Okay, you got some cotton applicator, you can clean the side of this. Like that, or if there is thick mucus stuck here, you can do like that as well. All right, so you clean it with hydrogen peroxide and normal saline. The next step will be rinsing. You will rinse it with normal saline only. Okay, normal saline. Then you can use some gauze to dry it. All right. What about those things inside? What we are doing in the unit? We are putting the gauze like this, and we can clean it like that. And sometimes we can push it with this cotton applicator. Okay? So just clean it and dry it. Then after that, you're ready to put it in or put it back. Okay? So how you will put it back? How you will put it? It will be like this, like that, or like this? No, it should be like this. Okay? Slide it through and then rotate. And then it will go in by itself and then lock it by clockwise okay now the next step is to clean the stoma okay so just remove the tie head trauma head trauma <laughs> okay so just remove the tie you can remove this if you have um, um, a strap it's much better but if you don't have you can use the new gauze or the tie itself okay just how to clean it lift this part and you have the iodine swab open it and then clean around around the stomach okay then after that change the tie of the patient okay then after that what are you going to do the last thing the last thing is, you will check again the lung sounds of the patient, okay? If improved or not. And then hyperventilate again the patient. Because you did suctioning, you did tracheostomy care, hyperventilate them again for one minute. Okay? Do you have any questions? Questions? How many times will you do the tracheostomy care? You, you mean how frequent we need yeah, to do it in the unit? As per policy, it's clearly written, it should be every 8 hours. Every 8 hours? Yes, every 8 hours. But in reality, what is happening? Every shift. Okay? Every shift. But, as I told you, we can go beyond the policy. Meaning to say, the requirement is every 8 hours. But if you saw that the patient is, you know, the, the tracheostomy is clogged, the club, you need, you need to, to clean it now. It doesn't matter even for hours. I have to clean it. This is for patient safety to prevent aspiration. Okay? But not go below the policy <laughs> that you will clean your patient after 24 hours. Okay? That's not right. Okay? And just so you know, in every hospital that we have, we are working in, we have a certain policy. We have to comply. We have to follow the policy. The, the thing here is, if you did not follow the policy and something happened to your patient, what will happen to you? Hospital cannot save you. Okay? You did your own thing. What about if you did the policy? You followed the policy, something happened to your patient. Hospital can protect you. Because all the policies that we have in the hospital, these are evidence-based. And these are 
um, uh, by by standards, you know, by Subahi and by JCI standards. Okay. Any any questions, guys? No questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Thank you so much. We'll see you in the unit.